Krishna. Uh, <coughs> just we can uh, do it responsibly once. It's very simple. There's only three words. I'll tell you when you're chanting, so make sure you don't lose your soul or go mad. And that is um, <laughs> the first word. The first word, Hare, is a boss. Anyway, it's a Sanskrit word which means uh, it's an address to the feminine aspect of the absolute truth. If you go back to the ancient traditions, even the Dead Sea Scrolls actually, you find that the absolute truth was conceived of as thank God, masculine and feminine. <clears throat> and that, that, that the masculine and feminine which play such a prominent role in our world uh, comes from God. So that uh, natural attraction, that natural complementary sense of completing oneself in this female-male thing that goes on down here on earth, actually uh, originally exists in a pure spiritual form, in a pure spiritual form. And so the desire we have to find, to say, true love or pure love, or some, some great, or people say this Anyway, the music that you hear, how we source your music. How are you? Come on in. Still a few good seats left. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, that natural desire for a perfect relationship, for a pure love, for to perfectly complete oneself in a relationship, <clears throat> in the ancient Vedic tradition, uh, we find that that exists originally in the absolute. Therefore, if you look at what is today called Hinduism, and that's a somewhat modern term, there's a whole history of that word we talked about, but apart from that, <clears throat> you find, for example, Radha Krishna, Rana, Sita Ram, we just had Ram Novami, Sita Ram, or uh, Sati and, and Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti, so on. There's always the, the concept of a couple, the divine couple being the, I think they all say the platonic form of love in this world. So anyway, so Hare, in the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare, in Sanskrit, uh, that point all the grammar here, but it can mean either the Bhakti, well, I'll keep my word, not going to grammar. But it is understood to mean the, an address to the feminine aspect of the absolute truth. Krishna. Uh, the word Krishna is a, uh, is, has been etymologized by ancient sages and grammarians as a combination of two semantic elements. Uh, Krish, come on in. No problem. More than Marian. Krish, which means to attract. I mean, those of you in India obviously know the word Krishi. Agriculture, a little plowing, like pulling Krishi. And um, just like in English, think of the, of the relation between the word Krish, uh, whoops, English. Think of the relation in English between the word traction, like a tractor, and attraction. If you know German, it's the same thing. Right? Almost all the Western languages, Latin languages, traction, attraction, or zium, non zium in German. So what's the relation? Why, why should attraction be so close to the word for tractor, you know, like traction? The idea is, in Sanskrit, the same thing, Krishna. The idea is that, um, that uh, something is attractive, but it literally pulls the mind. It has mental traction, it pulls the mind. Like, for example, if let's say just a, 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 an absurdly good-looking person walked into, walked into a room, people just naturally look. It's not a... It's not a rational choice. It's just your mind is just pulled, just like you know, just like a tractor pulls things. Your, our mind is just pulled, mental traction. So that's what it means to be attractive. And so the word krish in Sanskrit has both those meanings: attraction and attraction. And so and na is an abbreviation of the Sanskrit root nun, which which indicates pleasure, the experiencing the pleasure, the giving of pleasure, as in the word ananda, you know, the yoga traditions. And so Krishna has been understood uh, uh, by, by sages and acharyas, teachers, as meaning that God is the source uh, of all pleasure and God is infinitely attractive. 
So this is a very positive sense of God. No need for a 12 step, 12 step anger management programs or anything. So, I mean, a God who actually doesn't need 12 step programs for jealousy or anger. A God who's actually infinitely beautiful and, and, and the source of all pleasure. And Brahma also means the source of spiritual happiness. There's a verse, in fact, Ramante Yogi Namananti. Yogis or the spiritual practitioners uh, find pleasure in the infinite. The simple idea here is that if we seek satisfaction in a finite object, then necessarily our satisfaction will be finite. And people find that all the time in, in relationships. Endorphins wear off and somebody else, you know, where, what is that? Where is it? Like, yeah. Baby, baby, where is that? So, so, so that's the idea. But, it, but if, we, if we fall in love with an infinite object, fall in love with something which is infinite, then our pleasure is infinite. And so we have an unlimited capacity to experience pleasure and happiness. But uh, if we seek pleasure from a limited object, then our happiness is limited. This doesn't mean we should give up all human relationships. It rather means that in the sense of karma and yoga, if our relationships are ultimately focused on the infinite, then even our human relationships become unlimited. So anyway, uh, those three words, Hare Krishna and Rama. So we're going we're to do a little kirtan. I explain for you that um, if you look at the uh, roots of, of Western and uh, Asian rational and philosophical traditions, there was always an understanding that in order to come to higher knowledge, in order to get, in order to understand the most important things, understand them deeply, one has to be in a higher state of consciousness, and therefore. Uh, of knowledge was always accompanied by the process of purifying the soul. That's in the original academy, which was Plato's academy, where it was something like an ashram. Also in Pythagoras. So, well, we'll chat. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> we'll do it usually the way it's done is respond. This is a European instrument called a harmonium, but really became very popular in India. It's not used very much in Europe anymore. So... Uh, we'll do responsibly in the sense of all chant first and we say, okay, and then 